Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be having a look at Nice Hash OS versus Minostat. Nice Hash OS and Minostat are both profit switching systems. Let's start by taking a look at Nice Hash OS. I'm going to assume that you've got your USB key and have just booted up and uh, let's carry on. The first time you boot can take uh, two or three minutes. It seems like quite a long time. I think that Nice Hash might do an update on the first boot and get the latest minings, miners. The next thing you'll see is the status will say, uh, you should see your rig appear for the name that you created, and then the status will say benchmarking. During this time, it's testing out each of the miners to see what the uh, throughput is that it can achieve. Once it knows how fast each of your cards can mine, it then looks up the profit it can make from each one and then chooses the algorithm that's the most profitable. And it will switch automatically between those algorithms. You can see in this case here, it's been mining both Kapow, which is Ravencoin, and Zal Hash, which is Flux. And that's pretty much all there is to Nice Hash OS. It's very simple. You download it, you burn it, you boot it. It does all the profit switching for you. Um, there's not really a lot of uh, controls. And if you're just wanting to earn BTC and mine to uh, Nice Hash, it's um, pretty good for that purpose. Negatives for Nice Hash OS are to do with motherboard compatibility. It's almost impossible to get Nice Hash OS running on some motherboards, and there's almost no diagnostics. Um, so personally, for me, I was uh, really keen on Nice Hash OS, and I gave it a good tryout on one of my rigs. It worked great, and then I thought, right, I'm going to change over to this. And then I tried to install it on on some of the other rigs, and some just no matter how hard I try, I can't get it going. So uh, then I moved on and I tried Minostat. Let's go have a look at that. That when you first log in, uh, it's more like um, it's more like a business. So first of all, you get an overview of the market. So you can customize what you see here. I've just got the uh, uh, the top crypto coins I'm interested in. Next, it shows you an overview of what your uh, different workers are mining. So at the moment, uh, I've got two workers on Minostat and they're both mining ETH via um, two miners. Uh, next, it shows you what your um, uh, what you're earning overall at the moment. Um, per day, I'm earning 14 New Zealand dollars. I'm spending $10 on electricity, and so I'm making a gross profit of $3.29. Then it shows all the pools you're mining to at the moment. And then lastly, it shows you, this is customizable, you select uh, the algorithms you see, but for each algorithm you're interested in, it shows you what the top performing pools are for each of those uh, algorithms. Um, it also shows you other coins, like for Kapow, it shows you other coins that use that same algorithm that you could consider mining um, that are more profitable. Let's take a look at benchmarking in Minostat. What benchmarking does is you can set up a test for um, a rig, and then you can give it a list of algorithms and a list of miners, and then ask it to spend, for instance, two minutes on each algorithm and each miner. And what that'll do is automatically find out the um, the, the highest performing miner on your rig for each algorithm, and also the highest, uh, the one of the lowest energy consumption, as well as the one that has the best efficiency. Uh, so when I set up my rigs, I just give them a whole uh, mix of things I'm interested in doing, and then I just pick out, uh, at the moment, I choose to pick out the ones that just have the uh, best speed. Once you've benchmarked your rig to determine its performance, you can then move on to configuring profit switching. With most of the screens in minor stat, you can select all the workers you want to work on. I've set mine up uh, just per rig at the moment. All right, so what happens is you give it a list of things you'd like to mine. So for instance, I can say I am interested in mining uh, on two, uh, two miners uh, mining ETH, which is there. Um, you can select a uh, pool. Uh, so that's what you'd like to do, and then you select the pool you want to mine. So in this case, it might be two miners ETH. I select the wallet I want to store it in, and then um, I tend to use the benchmark, and then I select the miner I want to use. So in this case here, I'll show you some I've got set up here. So I have ETH for two miners set up, and I also have um, ETH for nice hash set up. Uh, also, um, um, uh, Zao hash slash uh, flux and um, compel via nice hash. So what the profit switching does is for your rig, it'll work out 
the most profitable combination of these every 10 minutes. So for instance, it'll work out, is it more profitable to mine ETHFIRE 2 miners or ETHFIRE nice hash or one of these other combinations? Now, the way it does that is it needs to know um, the hash rate and power consumption of your rig for each of the algorithms you want to do. And that's where that benchmarking comes in. So if you've done a benchmark, you can say, I want to fill in the test results from whichever benchmark I did. You can also just simply type in these numbers if you know them. Um, this um, minor stat also has a database, so you can uh, look up the database and fill it in. Some other options here. Um, rather than just using these static values, you can ask minor stat to fill these in based on your on the miner's performance. Um, if you fill in, so you got um, with profit switching, you've got a couple of options. So you could just um, you could just optimize on pure yield. If you did that, you just set the um, power cost to zero. If you're interested in optimizing on uh, gross profit, so profit after your power costs, then you fill in the electricity costs. Um, now this says how different um, these have to be before we'll consider switching. So it's currently set to 1%. So let's say I was mining on, it was mining on two miners and then nice hash was 0.5% more profitable, it wouldn't switch in that case to it hit one. So you can set this to be any number you want. And then this is the minimum amount of time it can mine on, an, on uh, one of your combinations before it'll consider switching. So you wanna make sure these aren't um, too low. So let's say you set it down to the minimum of every 10 minutes. Um, so what happens is at the end of 10 minutes, if it found one of the other combinations was more profitable, it would simply switch to it. But your miners would have a whole lot of, um, your workers would have a whole lot of in-flight calculations they were already doing. And those results will get biffed away. They are like uh, invalid shares. Um, so you don't wanna be biffing away work too frequently. Um, so you want to you want to mine for a reasonable period of time to keep it efficient. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is you for each algorithm your profit um, uh, that your profit switching, you can also have a overclocking profile per algorithm that will switch miners and switch overclocking profiles automatically. You go to workers here. And this shows you all the workers you've got. It includes things like the profitability of uh, each of those rigs. Another feature unique to minor stat uh, that I wouldn't use, but you can also uh, have tasks. So you can say like um, this rig GPU six needs a uh, pad replacement, and um, you can have a due date, and you can assign it to people. Uh, this would be good for a larger mining farm, but uh, I'm a home miner, so this is not something I would use. Let's see what a rig looks like now. So let's dive into rig two. Um, so you, uh, kind of like a hive OS, you get a sort of a lot of top level numbers just along the top. Uh, you get um, uh, IP addresses of the rig here. Um, this is also how you remotely control the rig. So you just click on these, and then each each rig has got uh, this web interface with lots of different different bits of information. And um, when you click on console, it also lets you remote control um, a rig. So that's how that, that process is done in Minostat. Uh, so uh, it shows, next bit is it shows you the crypto, hash rates, income, all that kind of stuff. And then um, we get uh, graphs and mining. Now, because this is doing automatic profit switching, you can see here, for instance, I was mining uh, EFI 2 miners here. And then, um, uh, and then ETH became more popular via NiceHash, so it switched over here. Um, you can click on profit switching here, and it shows you that's where each time it did a profit switch, because one was more profitable than the other. Um, this shows you all the cards that are in the rig. Um, you got your uh, overclocking profiles here, just like you do in um, high volt air, so you call voltages, memory voltages, uh, all, the, all the normal things. You get uh, a lot more historical information minus stats. So I can see the temperatures of all the GPUs over time here. Uh, that's core temperature. This is the memory temperatures, um, fan speeds, uh, power consumption per GPU, and uh, hash rate per, per GPU. When you've got profit switching um, enabled, uh, it tells you that what it would be earning on all your different settings. 
and um, and then of course it's using the most profitable one at the moment but you can see how far off the uh, next one is at the moment let's take a look at how you set up pools and wallets so in minus that you go to address editor go to wallets and you uh, add a wallet let's take a look at how you actually configure a rig to mine something so you can just say I want to configure and you can tick if you tick multiple rigs the configuration will be done on multiple rigs so let's just do uh, one rig here so you can come in here um, you can associate uh, an overclocking profile uh, a profit switching profile um, you can um, if you're not doing um, profit switching you can um, assign a default miner here and then you can come down and give it a default coin to mine a default pool and a default wallet fill in electricity costs um, now this now we all know that GPUs don't report a lot of GPUs don't report the actual power they're being used plus you got the, the motherboard power consumption so this lets you correct the, uh, the power consumption being reported um, to uh, minus stat um, so in this case I have to add 108 watts on to the actual number of reported numbers to get the correct information earnings deduction percent so if you have other costs and you know it's um, and you're losing let's say three percent for something you can fill that in uh, you can set up some warning temperatures for hot very hot um, number of devices is optional but if you set it that means there should be in this case two GPUs in this rig and um, you can create automation rules to do something if the number of GPUs you've said should be in the rig don't match how many are actually in the rig uh, in um, minus stat it has this concept of automation so you can create rules to do all sorts of things so um, here's some example rules I've created I've said um, if uh, a GPU error is reported and that means on um, any worker is more than um, 10 then power cycle that whole uh, rig usually that means you're getting a crashing GPU or something so if we get more than uh, 10 errors it's 10 errors in 10 minutes then power cycle it this one says that if uh, a GPU goes idle um, so idle is when the hash rate goes to zero and this means on any rig and it stays idle for 10 minutes then reboot the whole machine let's take a look at our fan control options the places you can set this in uh, minus stat but um, one way is if you go to clock tune you choose um, one of your existing settings you've done and then down the bottom you can you can either use a static fan control like in Hive OS or you can say auto fan controls where you set a minimum speed a maximum speed and then a target temperature you'd like to use let's take a look at some of the general rig control options minus stat these controls are all along the top here so that's your options to stop or reboot uh, stop mining uh, that's a quick reboot machine you can restart just the mining software tasks show you jobs you've created for it uh, that's your uh, overclocking settings um, I haven't used that button before uh, diagnostics runs basic diagnostics on the rig and last activity shows you uh, events that have happened um, now when there's been errors it also captures the log from the actual miner so you can just go straight to this so there was a mining error here so you can just go straight to it and um, see what was logged for that specific error uh, some things I haven't shown you yet um, is the minor stat uh, control room uh, I haven't really had a much of a play for this but what this can do is if you're uh, I've got a large farm you can you can um, mimic the shelving you've got and where all the rigs are and then uh, what it can do is produce heat maps and show you um, hot spots in your uh, mining facility or hot spots on shelves let's take a look at what kind of alerting options we have the alerting is quite good so you can come in here and there are lots and lots of alerts that you can click on and set criteria and then have it email you or send uh, telegram messages so that's the nice hash os versus minus stack comparison nice hash is quite good if you just want to only want btc and you're happy to only mine against um, nice hash um, it's uh, very simple there's not really much to show you about how it runs or how to set it up the um, biggest downside is you may not be able to get it running on your rig it's it's um, it just simply doesn't really work and there's very few diagnostics nice hash os is a bit like minus stat but with 99 percent of the features missing 
Uh, Mindestat also offers profit switching. It, it's got really good compatibility with all the motherboards and uh, gives you extensive controls over all aspects of mining. I hope that comparison was useful. I'm gonna leave some videos around my head of things, other things that you might find of interest. <music>